Hi, everyone. This is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast, back with another article review. In this episode, I want to look at a really interesting paper that looked at the relationship between kind of skill level, expertise, um, exploration of the movement solution space, and creativity. And it's going to use the task of a kickboxing. And it's building on a couple papers that I've already reviewed on the podcast and talked about in my first book, one of them. And I'll pull those out as we go along. Here's the paper that it, it's um, this paper here, Skill Shapes, Functional Movement Variability and Exploration Tendencies uh, by Dam Dominic Orth and John Vanderkamp and colleagues. A great group of researchers that have done a lot of research related to creativity, how it relates to practice, you know, and, and so on. So let's look, let's dive in and see what they're talking about. So the central question here they're, they're interested in getting at is what is the relationship between your individual constraints what you've learned before, your intrinsic dynamics and creativity, right? So in, for those that don't know, you know, I, I've covered intrinsic dynamics before. They're basically your coordination tendencies. We have this pr preference to coordinate our movements in certain ways um, based on our experience, based on our, our own individual constraints, right? And this kind of shapes how we're going to learn a new movement, right? And so they look at this a couple different ways, right? So there, we they, we have these kind of stable movement patterns, these preferences that we naturally default to in a given set of constraints. And these could either, and we could look at these two ways. One, they could facilitate creativity and exploration for new movement solutions, or they could actually hinder it, right? So, uh, for example, you, you if you've learned a task of hit a punching with your left hand, like right, a lot of practice, if I add a constraint that slows down, maybe I put a strap around your arm that makes it, you can't punch as hard with your left hand, right? Maybe that kind of, that tendency, that, that the stability of that solution is going to interfere with you trying something else, right? Something else of your right hand, right? So maybe um, these intrinsic dynamics, the stability we've developed is going to hinder creativity, right? Um, so you increase skill level, so that's one possibility. The alternative is maybe with increased skill level, increased experience, increased, increased better information movement control laws, we might be able to better find new and explore movement solutions off of what we've already learned. We're going to get, you know, especially if we've learned in a situation where we've manipulated constraints and we've promoted that adapt, adaptability, right? One of the key qualities of experts that we're looking for in the ecological approach is Bernstein's idea of dexterity. The idea of being a movement problem solver, being able to come up with a movement solution that works in any given set of constraints. So maybe as you gain expertise, even though you have these tendencies, these intrinsic dynamics, you've also improved your problem solving ability. So that maybe that's going to make you more, more creative. And then there's the alternative view I mentioned before. Um, we also suggest that individuals with advanced skills might have more stability. There might be more uh, tractors, more, you know, things that are going to hold you uh, to where you are. It might make you less likely to go in completely uncharted territory. Do you have, you know, we could think of it as having more stable attractors. Right? It's being doing something completely, accretely creative move might not be happening once you're experienced. Right? So that's what they're getting at in this paper. So what they're going to use is they're going to use um, a task that was, I discussed in episode 310, and in my second book, when looking at the idea of metastability, and this this kickboxing task, right? If I used by Herstovsky and colleagues, what we do is look at the kickboxing when you're when you manipulate the constraint of distance, right? So the idea here is that distance, right? As you get distance, different movement solutions open up, right? When you're really close, you can do an uppercut. When you're further out, you can do a jab. When you're really far away, you can do a side kick, right? You can't really do a side kick when you're super close, right? So these different um, solutions emerge, and the idea of metastability is we can put you at a point where that you can do two or more solutions at the same distance, right? That, well, that's not really what, what they're talking about here. Is manipulating this distance allows for different solutions, right? Constraints to emerge, and in general, one or more of these solutions is going to be most functional. It's going to allow you to deliver the most force from that distance, right? So that's what they're going to build on. They're going to. This is the task they're going to be using in their study. They're going to manipulate um, the um, distance of the person from the bag, right? And they're going to look at creativity in movement solutions, right? 
And they're also going to look at other things like functionality. How hard did you think? Okay. So that's the background. So the primary, the, what are the goals? The primary focus of the study was to investigate the impact of skill level, your previous training, your previous experience on, on your willingness to explore new, new solutions and come up with something really creative. They went with, you know, they have to, I, I think, you know, if you ask the authors, I'm sure this was mostly exploratory study. They didn't have a strong hypothesis either way, but they, they have to state something, right? That's how statistics work. So they probably, they went with the experts are going to be more creative. It's good. You're going to build off what you already have. It's going to allow you to become with more, explore better um, and find better, more unique solutions. Okay. And um, so actually so it has show greater creativity. Okay, so what they did in the study, they had two groups. They had Dutch, uh, they were, this was in Holland, in Amsterdam, and they picked, um, they had 21 participants that were competitors in Dutch kickboxing and 21 who had no formal training in, in martial arts. Um, they were hitting the freestanding bag. Um, they, they varied the distance across trials, okay? Um, the distance was body scaled for each participant, so it was a it was a it was measured relative to their leg length. So the distance varied between zero percent and a hundred percent of their leg length. Um, hundred a hundred percent of their leg length in intervals of eleven percent, right? So they're they're systematically varying. At each position, the the participant had to strike the bag ten times consecutively. They were given rest. They're instructed to use both their hands and their feet and strike the bag and emphasize originality. So they're kind of instructing them to come up with something unique, but they're also instruct, instructed to hit the bag as hard and fast as possible, focusing on the functional functional ability of this, right? So that's the basic design. They're going to have experts and novices hit the bag over and over from distance differences. That's the main constraint being manipulated. And look at the, the originality, the exploration of different movement solutions. So I think this is a really great way to kind of study. This is a very difficult thing to study in the wild, right? To control enough things to understand this. So um, so here, you know, you have the bag, you're close, you can do the hook, your moderate distance, you can hook, undercut, you can straight punch. Farther away, you can only do the straight punch, right? So the, the and in the middle is kind of this region of metastability where all three work, right? And they look, you know, that you can do different left-handed, right-handed jab, twist, all these different options, right? So that that's the basic design. Okay. Two, they tried using kind of machine learning to classify the different things, but none of those really worked. They would, they would, they had to go over with really expert raters. So someone watching the video and classifying, you know, that's a right-handed jab, that's a roundhouse, so on. And they did it the right way, though. They had two different raters that rated them independently. They measured it, measured their inter-rater inter agreement. Presented that information that was quite high. Okay. What they did for each of the movements, they quantified several aspects of it. Functionality was based, uh, let me, uh, so functionality, fluency, originality, functional fluency, creativity, and entropy. Let me show you what each of those mean. So functionality, basically, functionality refers to, is it achieving its goal, right? How hard, and here that we're talking mainly about force. Are we hitting hard, right? Fluency refers to the number of variants you can demonstrate while still um, in striking, right? So the, it's kind of your dexterity, how many different things. Functional fluency refers to how many different variances, how many different variants can you do that still hit the bag hard? Right, and they're talking about over fifty percent of their maximal force. Of the, and again, measured uh, as across the whole group. Right, so we're talking about actions that are both functional um, and 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 original. Okay, entropy is a measure. I've talked about this on a few times on the podcast. Entropy is a measure of predictability. Right, so high ent entropy means that um, that you can predict what happened now from what happened before. Okay. Low entropy means there's, um, sorry, high entropy means unpredictability. You can't predict what happened from what happened before. Low entropy means you can predict what happened. So it means they're using the same thing over and over again. It's a measure of how much they're changing their solution. Originality, what they did was look across the tire group and, and quantified something as original as something that occurred in less than 5%. Less than 5% of the people in the study used that move. And creativity, right? This is the same work Dominic's done before in his studies, right? Creati a creative action is both original and functional, right? So it that's really important. So it's used very rarely by less than 5% of the group, but
but it also has high force, right? So it's not just some random thing that doesn't do achieve your goal, right? So these are the things they're looking at. They're looking at the relationship between these different things and, and doing some interesting things. Okay, so what did they find? They looked at almost 4,000 of these actions. So, wow, that's a lot of work. Um, they identified 22 different ones in the paper. You can look at the, what these were, right hook, left hook, you know, they, as I mentioned. They looked at the overall frequencies to identify originality, right? Um, they found some relationship between the different measures, right? So participants who had broader exploration, which is measured by entropy, right? High entropy means you're, what you do now is less predictable from what happened before. That means you're exploring more. Um, they had higher fluency, right? Um, increased variety of actions was associated with more original actions. This is an important point, right? That I'll talk about at the end, but I'll say it here, right? In ecological approach, creativity is not some special magical process where you're dreaming. It's, it's basically... Uh, it's statistical. It's an outcome of exploring a lot, right? If I change the constraints and encourage you to explore a lot and you're exploring a lot of things, that you're just going to stumble on creative act, original creative actions. It's not some magical insight, right? It's just a mere kind of statistical outcome of having to continually adapt and be fluent to the constraints, okay? Interestingly, this paper, they did not support, large, most part, did not support their hypothesis as there was not really evidence, there was very few group differences. So the novice performers came out with many original actions as the expert ones. The only real differences between was looking at the relationship between entropy, uh, exploration, and fluency, right? And then we'll see in a second the functionality of the movements, right? So here, um, the functionality of the movements was way higher for experts. So they hit with more force, not surprisingly. Um, Across the different action variants, you get uh, more fluency, more different ways they could achieve the high force. Functional fluency, there was not really any difference there. Uh, you know, next experts, depending on the move, you do get some expert differences and this kind of relationship, okay? So it's tended to pro 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 uh, support the kind of um, first hypothesis that there, there's no real your intrinsic dynamics, your expertise, neither really hind it kind of an in-between hypothesis, neither really hinders you or does it help you in being coming up with creative actions. Both novice people and experts are, are equally good at exploring the movement space and coming up with creative actions if they're coached in this way, right? They're not being forced to do something in a certain way. Which, so we have this kind of natural tendency to explore, right? Which is, is really cool, I think. Um, what's different, though, right, is experts were better at coming up with things that were functional, things that relied on a lot of force, right? So they're kind of, they're in terms of true creativity, something that's both functional and original, they, they were higher, okay? So they partially support experts that were more creative because experts could have things that were more functional than novices, even though they came up with the same amount of original actions, okay? There was no significant, the, the novices and experts had the same amount of original actions. It, the experts were bo both more original and fluent, okay? Suggests that they're equally, novices and experts are equally proficient at exploring and, and trying a diverse range of things. So it's not the case that you need a lot of training to be original, right, in this idea, okay? Um, the development of new techniques are not built off some mo internal model or knowledge or understanding of the skill. They're kind of a built off the constraints manipulations, right? If you submissionally create an environment where the constraints are being manipulated and you encourage people to explore, anybody can do it, which, I as I said, I think is a great message. And here's the thing I reemphasize again. Creativity is a byproduct of exploration. It's not some magical aha moment. Right, it's simply adapting to constraints, being dexterous, and coming up with these solutions that a creativity emerges on its own. Right, I think that's that's a that's what we need in ecological dynamics. Okay, so the the as I mentioned, the main fine difference between experts and novices was in terms of functionality, how hard they hit the bag. Right, so experts had more functional movement variability, keeping the force strong whilst coming up with different solutions, where novices didn't have that much. So. They're more tightly bound by uh, functional considerations. So again, I think this is a really interesting finding, again, in, in terms of the practical implications. 
very give people opportunities to explore even in the first you know we we tend to do the want to do the opposite right with novices let's keep all the constraints really tight and not vary things so to get them to learn the the basic movement the fundamentals before we go this is showing they have the capacity to explore and learn things and you know maybe add the functionality later on okay um they both possess equal capability to explore different actions and and do these things right there's not some special thing we don't have to provide a base on which you to be original okay um and be variable in your movements it's a natural human you know i tried to emphasize you have a whole chapter in my book we're but we're born we're made to produce and detect variation right humans are made to be variable right and this further shows it here right that we're good at that right we're not good at doing the same thing over and over um so i think that's a really nice message in fort code you know, vary the distances, vary the angles, vary the opponent. Even early on has great benefits in terms of getting people to explore, getting people to learn to come up with these movement solutions, and hopefully learn to be that dexterous movement problem solver that we want that can come up with things that are both original and functional. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for joining me. Cheers for now, and keep them coupled.